Are you in a tough situation and you have to deal with a toxic manager? In today's video, I have five ways to help you deal with a toxic manager. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Preston. I am the author of a professional development book called Harness Your Butterflies and the creator of the Career Accelerator Program. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I have new videos every Tuesday. Smash the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get into the tips. Okay, so we've all kind of been there. You have a manager that you really don't get along with and the relationship has really kind of spiraled to a place of being really, really toxic. Nobody really wants to be in that position and in today's video, we're gonna cover five ways that you can kind of make the situation better without enabling the toxicity to continue. The first thing that I wanna say before I jump into the tips is when you're dealing with a toxic manager, the worst possible thing that you can do is confront them head on and have that tough conversation if you're not prepared with other things in place before you confront sort of the toxicity um, in your group. And I'll get more into this when we, when we talk about the tips, but you wanna make sure that when you're dealing with a toxic manager that you're keeping records or keeping track of every interaction that you have, which I'll jump into later. So. With that, let's get into the tips. Number one, the first way of dealing with a toxic manager is to understand the trust dynamic. The first thing that a lot of toxic managers will try to do is try to get you to have a false sense of security when you're working with them. They try to build up trust at a really inappropriate rate in order to understand what makes you tick and how to manipulate you down the road. Now, trust is one of those things that you build up with someone over a period of time. So you do one little act here, one little act here, one little act here, and then eventually you start building up a trusting relationship. Now, what happens with toxic managers is they oftentimes don't know how to build those bridges or build those relationships, so they create these kind of artificial trust structures where they interact with you in a way that makes you think that they're trustworthy or that makes you think that you're safe with them and that you can confide in them anything that's really going on. The reason that they do that is because they wanna be the person that can kind of manipulate you or gaslight you, if you've heard that term, into kind of making the situation not a problem and putting the ownership back on you when really the situation isn't about you at all. When you're stuck in this weird trust dynamic, the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you understand that you are not crazy and you wanna make sure that you're putting up appropriate levels of trust building with those individuals. And if you've identified them as a toxic manager, the last thing that you wanna do is trust them at all. So you wanna to continue to do your job, which I'll talk about in a second, but when you're doing that, you wanna make sure that you're not artificially building up trust with someone just because they're trying to encourage you to do so. Only be trustworthy to the people that you actually do trust and that have proven their trust over time. For more information, check out this video here. The second way to deal with a toxic manager is to set boundaries. Now that sounds like a really weird therapist thing to say, but there's different ways of setting boundaries both formally and informally. For example, if your boss calls you on a Saturday, you can say, I'm not working today. That's an example of a formal boundary. But there's other ways that you can kind of set up these informal boundaries. So you, it's kind of like you're, you're setting up these little red flags, if you will. And when people step over that boundary, you say, okay, there's a red flag breach here. And then you can kind of rescind whatever kind of leeway that you've given that person. But typically what setting boundaries looks like is figure out what you're comfortable with, what you identify as a professional working environment. Obviously, everyone's boundaries are gonna be slightly different, especially if, you're, if you know the person on a personal level, if you only know them professionally, or if you don't really know them at all. There's different kind of levels that we have for boundary setting, but the general idea is figure out what, where you're comfortable with and how you expect people to interact with you. If people are interacting with you in a way that doesn't comply with the way that you would like to be treated, it's time to figure out how to deal with that either in a formal or informal way. So for example, if someone breaches your boundary, let's say something like your boss calling you on a Saturday, you can say, I'm not working today. I will deal with it on Monday. That's a way of kind of backing up and saying, this is how I expect to be treated. And here's my rules of engagement. Now, the second way is if you're dealing with them in an informal capacity, if they have breached a boundary in an informal, and you kind of want to deal with it in an informal way, what you can do is instead of engaging with them head on, problem solve around it and kind of go from there. 
So what looks like informal boundary setting is if you are, let's say, physically uncomfortable with your boss being in your general vicinity, let's say at lunch, if your boss were to come and sit next to you and start talking to you, one thing that you might be able to do to kind of keep up your boundaries is to physically, you know, say, oh, excuse me, I need to go talk to somebody, stand up and remove yourself from the situation. You're not telling them that they need to stay 30 feet away from you, but you're creating that physical barrier. There's a lot of other ways to do that, but that's just the example of what a formal boundary and an informal boundary might look like. Okay, number three, and this is what I talked about a little bit at the beginning, keep formal records. Now, in some cases, when you're dealing with a toxic manager, it may have to get escalated to human resources or even the executive team if there's some sort of breach of ethics or morals in, in your kind of your working environment with your toxic boss. Make sure that you're keeping a detailed record of everything that's going on, everything that's said, anything that you view as part of your breach of kind of your breach of your boundaries, of your company's values, of your company's uh, different things that they have set up from a personnel standpoint. The more records that you can keep, the better off you will be, because if you need to eventually report this person in the future, if it goes to that level, then you will have all the detailed information that you need. Now, when you're keeping records, you might wanna have some like specific formal documentation, whether it be like emails, uh, phone call, like if you have like recorded phone calls or things like that. The other way that you can keep notes is if some, if you're in a meeting, make sure that you're, you're typing down everything and taking notes as you're going and just tell everyone in the room, hey, I'm taking notes. And one of the things that you can do, um, for example, for me, I had a supervisor who once instructed me to do something that I was uncomfortable with and I felt like was very unethical. I wrote in quotes and I said, you know, quote, da, 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 end quote, and then I put their name next to it. So then when you need to go reference back to it or reference to HR and say, this was my specific instruction. Okay, number four, and this is gonna sound a little bit dumb, but do your job. You do not wanna be a target of a toxic boss because really what happens is if you become the target, things become really, really difficult for you. It's hard to move up, it's hard to clear your reputation, and it's really hard to get out of that sticky situation and get people to believe what you're saying, and it becomes a he, sh he said, she said situation when it comes to dealing with a toxic manager. So do your job, try to remain as uh, flexible or um, or ingrained in your team as is comfortable, but make sure that you're not just dealing with a toxic boss, throwing your hands up and saying, I'm not going to do anything from here on out. Not a good strategy. So make sure you're getting your work done. For more information, check out this video here. The last thing that you want to do, tip number five or thing number five for dealing with a toxic boss is to make an exit plan. Now, obviously, if a toxic manager is in your organization, Sometimes you can get around it internally. If you like working at your organization, you can kind of report it to HR, or you can be request to be on a different team or that sort of thing. Sometimes though, if you're dealing with either high level executives or if the company is not very big, you might have to figure out an exit plan and, and kind of figure out how you are going to exit the organization, at what points you're gonna be turning in those records that you're keeping and how that's gonna affect your role in the, in the long run. What tends to happen in a lot of sexual harassment lawsuits is people who have been harassed, they'll file a complaint or a grievance against a certain person. And a lot of times those people, if they're high level executives, are the people at the end of the day who are making the decision about what happens to your career. So kind of what happens for some people that are dealing with toxic managers is they don't really have a way out because they really just report, say, you know, this is what happened to me at this level and then that person can kind of retaliate. Now it's not legal to do that, but a lot of organizations, not a lot, but, but organizations that have that type of hierarchy where the person that you're reporting against is the person that's kind of the decision maker on what happens, oftentimes that doesn't end well for you. So make sure that you have an exit plan so that if you, if and when you decide to report and say this is what's happening with this toxic manager, you have a plan of leaving the organization or leaving your team so that you're not affected by the possible retaliation of what could happen with that person. Okay, so those were my five tips for dealing with toxic manager. Hopefully they're helpful. Let me know in the comments below, was this useful for you? Um, don't forget to check out my channel every Tuesday. I have a new video and that's all I have for you. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Come back and see me every Tuesday. Give me a thumbs up, give me a comment. I will see you later.